You are listening to Water Flying, a show dedicated to all things seaplanes. Brought to you by the Seaplane Pilots Association. My name is Steve McCoy. I'm the executive director of the Seaplane Pilots Association, which is the world's largest nonprofit advocacy organization dedicated to the protection and promotion of the water flying community. Climb aboard! We're about to start today's episode. Well, today's episode is vital for anyone that operates a seaplane, especially owners and those that want to be future owners of a seaplane. Now, proper maintenance and preventative measures for addressing seaplane corrosion issues can save you tens of thousands of dollars. And conversely, not applying the right amount of attention at the right time can easily cost the seaplane owner tens of thousands of dollars in maintenance. So it's the beginning of December and we're a lot closer to Christmas, but this really should have been our Halloween episode because if we're talking about corrosion, that's scary stuff. Yes, it is. So our guest today is maintenance guru and SPA board member, Harry Shannon. Harry, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. Good to be here. Harry has spent his entire adult life caring for seaplanes and is highly regarded for not only having one of the best maintenance facilities in the world, he also works tirelessly giving back to the community and the respect that he and his team at Amphibians Plus has earned by seaplane owners, quite honestly, like myself, is, is truly legendary. Amphibians Plus has been responsible for developing techniques for helping us keeping seaplanes flying providing the repairs that we need and addressing maintenance issues such as corrosion with a unique holistic approach that goes beyond repairing the problem, but more importantly ascertains what the what caused the problem and how to prevent it in the future. I'm really excited to bring some of this information back to my students. And Harry, I want to start off with, you know, just the basic simple explanation for our listeners. What exactly is corrosion? On the simplest level, corrosion is just the exchange of electrons. It exchanges between two parts of the airplane and creates corrosion. So it's an electrical process is what you're saying. That's, a, that's exactly right. It's interesting because you wouldn't think of that. You know, in an airplane, you know that you have your electrical system. You have the student pilots that have to memorize that diagram. But you don't think of, you know, the actual metal of the airplane being electrified in a way quotation marks i think that's interesting yeah i mean whether the airplane is sitting on the ramp or sitting in the water um there's electrical processes going on that's exactly right Uh, the similar metals are are one of the primary areas of corrosion Uh, extrusions actually have a a grain structure uh, that allows the exchange of electrons internally in the material and then temperature has an effect. Physically hot areas in the engine compartment, you know, can, can be more prone to corrosion than other places. So, you know, it's one thing to kick down, um, kick things down the road with like a, a land airplane doing maintenance. But Harry, what are the real, you know, problems with kicking the can down the road, uh, delaying maintenance on the seaplane? You know, delaying preventing maintenance on any aircraft has long-term effect. Uh, but seaplanes are on and around the water. Uh, they're often in you know warmer places in the world that you know, by nature that you know, we can't operate on ice and so forth. So we are exposed to water, which is the part of the electrolyte that allows this exchange or encourages this exchange of electrons. You know, electrolyte is part of the battery. It increases the battery's potential. Again, that exchange of electron being the cause of corrosion. Exactly. So the term saltwater operations, I know that it makes me, and I'm sure it makes other seaplane pilots cringe and just get a little nervous. Is it really as bad as it's made out to be, maintenance-wise? Simply, yes. From a practical standpoint, <laughs> a- amphibians plus absolutely loves saltwater operations. It sounds like a cash register to us. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Which is why my Super Cub will not... Uh, will never touch saltwater. Not if I have anything to do with it, you know. Uh. 
so not all salt water is created equal. There's there's other factors that can contribute to corrosion, right? You know, I'm sure salinity has an effect on it. You know, different parts of the country. Uh, you know, recent knowledge of, and I've never really considered it why Alaska didn't have a corrosion issue like other parts of the world. Uh, two things in Alaska. This is just colder up there than the average temperature. And the, the chemical reaction, that is the exchange of electrons, is dramatically affected by temperature. So with that effect, you know, whole parts of the country are going to have less corrosion than warm parts of the country. Salinity can, can do that. You know, so temperature and salinity have this big effect on corrosion. So, uh, you know, in Florida then, we're really kind of, you know, we have everything working against us, especially if we're flying to the Bahamas. We've got the heat, we've got humidity, we've got salinity. Um, we're just exposed. So your airplane's <laughs> having a hard time flying, and when it gets on the water, it's just going to... Yeah, with the land to give it a break and something eats it. Well, now, now, to a degree, uh, Florida's maybe not compared to Anchorage or something like that. But the flip side is we maintain airplanes that live in Florida. They may visit the Bahamas, but they don't actually land in the salt water. They also maintain airplanes that land and operate in the salt water. And there's a full, full effect in maintenance of a, a life, I say a life, 15 years of operations on airplanes. So you, you're continuously operating in the Bahamas, for example. You're going to see a full, full effect. Because the electrolyte in the Bahamas is like warm battery acid. It, it, <laughs> it makes that reaction just dry. That imagery, though, of landing your airplane and it's a beautiful place. You're at the no-name K. You're looking at all the pigs. And you just imagine your airplane being eaten from the inside and, out. People bringing the salt in on their shoes and the airplane just And, and, and Abby, that's, that's very true. And I've had owners that, you know, we've maintained salt airplanes and... And I say, hey, if, you know, it, it's like a taxi in, in Brooklyn. If you if you move it to another neighborhood, the antenna doesn't get broke off. The corrosion will slow down. And I say, oh, no, no, Harry. Please maintain our airplanes so that through our lifetime, we can enjoy No Name K and, and all the things that go with it because you can make the own airplane out of the bus. That's really what it is, isn't it? I mean, when they say you own an airplane, you never really own an airplane. You're maintaining that airplane for the next person. I always Is that got a response that. out of Harry. No, I like you, that. You, Abby, you, you, you I'm really. the love of his life right now. So it, that's always how I've thought of it. You know, if you take care of something and you make it available to the person, that's going to follow you. That's right. I, I think that's just fantastic. Right now, the average age of the airplanes we maintain is north of 30 years, getting closer to 40 years. And that's, that's across the spectrum. And as Steve has, has mentioned, he said our airplanes are made out of unobtainium. Unobtainium, yeah. You know, if we don't preserve them, their replacements aren't going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're going to be millions of dollars. Yeah, and so to that point, what we're talking about, about aircraft being un unobtainium, is that they're not manufacturing Cessna 180s. They're not manufacturing Cessna 185s. And they're not about to start manufacturing them again. They're not manufacturing Beavers. So we really have to maintain and take care of these aircraft because there is no replacement. It's a responsibility. Well, well Steve, something that, that in, owners ask me, how do we make this work? And something that I found works is what I call the sailor's mentality. I love it. When a sailor is thinking about a trip, he starts preparing his boat for that trip. Mm -hmm. While he's underway, he's looking at what's going on. He's fixing what he can literally fix underway. And he's got a notebook where he's making note of what he, he keeps track of that needs to be repaired, but he can't do underway. When the trip is done, he's working off his list. Before the time, the next, the next time the boat goes out, He's preparing it for that next trip, doing preventative maintenance. It's just a constant circle of preventative maintenance. So the actual flight time, flight time quotation marks, the, the actual time that he is sailing, I mean, how do you think that would compare to the pre-flight that he 
gives himself and the post flight and the post flight yeah and the post flight how do you think I, it would compare I, to the time i would say they're they're pretty close to equal mm-hmm. in other words all the steps in other words it, it's uh, the number of hours he's going to be underway would equal the number of hours that he's pre-flying i like that yeah. i'm probably going to equal the number of hours for his post flight and then he's got preparation again so it just it keeps going that sort of so you have to have this like really intimate relationship with your airplane, especially with seaplanes, because if you fly two hours, you're going to spend an additional four hours, two hours before, two hours after, potentially preparing the airplane and, and just caring for the airplane. Yeah. It's yeah. a living creature. It, it, it's a living creature. What needs to be done is protect it, you know, by whatever... We, we need to reduce the access of this electrolyte to the materials. You know, and this can be, you know, everybody's heard of corrosion X or ACF-50, and there's also LPS and O shield and, and numerous other products that, that do this and make this possible to do it. But if, if you don't do the prevention, then um, we, will, we will be there doing the repairs. So I like how you, how you put yourself in that, because it always seems like what I've noticed is there can be a disconnect between the pilots operating these seaplanes and the maintenance working on them. It's like the pilot hands over the keys. And, oh, my, no. Fix my <laughs> airplane, please. Yeah. Something broke. It's making the sound, you know, when you take your car into the shop and you can't describe what's wrong. Those are the ones that Harry likes because those are the well, real cash registers. <laughs> well, well, actually, we have probably 60%, 70% of our customers literally bring the aircraft in and say, do an annual here and they walk away. Oh, that's so frustrating. Like, what no, would no. what would you want those people? Well, but, but there's but what they're doing though is they allow us to completely repair the airplane. Ah. Okay. And then when they come in and they they see a bill that would choke some owners, they write a check and they say thank you, Harry. Right. And they go give tips to the mechanics on the shop floor. Wow. You know, I mean, it's it's a phenomenal feeling to be put in that position of trust okay but remember that the aircraft regardless of who's maintaining it the aircraft is going to reflect its owner if the owner you know if you try to fix everything and then he's complaining about the bill and it, you know it carries on now you've you've got a different mindset when that owner comes back am i going to have to spend three hours convincing him that he needed this done and that sort of thing so if he wants it maintained we can help him maintain. Right, like the the owner, the operator doesn't necessarily have to be an expert. They hired you and you get paid really well to do something very well with their airplane, but they have to have a responsibility. It has to be a partnership. Well, and the partnership often exists and the owners come in and say, hey, can I help with an annual? And very often we get owners because you realize seaplanes go to Lake far away. You know, cell coverage doesn't work. They don't have a sat phone. The airplane really needs to work. They need to have knowledge of their airplane. Absolutely. And a lot of them come in, and they'll do one annual with us, and we'll never see them again. But we've got people that come back year after year trying to learn their aircraft more to be more effective when they're out there. And I've gotten the sat phone calls, and because he had knowledge of his airplane, I could say, look here. By the way, you have to declare an emergency because you're not a mechanic, but do this. And it gets them home. Because when the bears and mosquitoes outnumber you, you need to be able to move the airplane. Exactly. That's another episode because I do a safety workshop called Don't Leave Home Without It. You have a aircraft toolkit travel bag that you recommend to your customers. I think we need to do an episode on each one of those because I think those are both really good episodes. Can you give us a little taste of what's in the bag, though? Like just no, a couple things? No. At all? Like a sneak peek? I'm really interested now. That'll have to be a YouTube video. I want to see what's in the bag. I'll, I'll give you one clue. Okay. We've got the latest technological version of bubble gum you could ever have. Oh, see, that's so frustrating because you don't give me enough to go on. So, you know, with all this doom and gloom regarding seaplane corrosion issues, I, I really want people to know uh, that a lot of this is really determined, again, by the amount of care that the owner and the operator primarily even really comes down to the pilot. 
can mitigate these effects with proper care and proper treatment. And so it just takes the discipline if you're going to fly a seaplane, especially in salt water, that you need to allocate that extra time and have the discipline to do that, that preventative part of it. As we mentioned earlier, that sailor's mentality is what applies to what we need to do. It's an ongoing thing. It's, it's not a destination. It's a continuous trip that we have to make. So everybody just slow down. You know, take a second. I know we all want to jump in and go splash around, but just you are PIC. Get in that mindset. This is your airplane. This isn't maintenance's airplane. They're helping you take care of it if you let them help you take care of it. But this is your airplane. Take some responsibility for it. Well, Harry and I always have this conversation, and one of the reasons we really connect on, on things like this is because I look at my airplanes. I've got, I've got my Cessna 120 right now that needs a lot of work, even though I've put a ton of money into it. And when we bought the Super Cub, it hasn't flown as much. And I don't have the heart to sell the airplane because I feel like I'm the steward of the airplane. It's it, the airplane's a 1947 aircraft. I'm responsible for continuing its future. And we we had a customer call, or a potential customer actually call yesterday, and he said I'm interested in buying a lake, and, and he's talking about what he wants to buy, and we described a few airplanes, and he said, well, let me tell you what we did with the previous airplane, and he said they bought it, and it was flying when they bought it. But they continue to improve it so that when they when they trade that airplane, they didn't get their money back, but the, everything that they spent. They did get a little more, but they got good value and they moved up to another airplane. They said, we want to buy another one. We want to make it better when we turn base of it as close to when we buy. Leave it better than you found it. Okay. I always like that with my 150. You know, we've redone the carpets, we put in we haven't put in new avionics. It still has a Loran in it, which is fine. But we put in so much money. I mean, we pretty much rebuilt the engine, taking care of the corros corrosion issues that are on it, even though it's a land plane. And I, I just like this idea of leaving something better than you found it, taking care of what you have. That's, that's, that's the attitude that makes it work out. So if you own a seaplane, if you're considering uh, purchasing a seaplane, I really urge you to find a good seaplane maintenance facility and and talk to us at the seaplane pilots association talk to our local field directors and reach out to us and we'll try to point you in a good direction if you don't have a good direction and conversely if you know of a good seaplane maintenance facility don't be afraid to give us a shout and let us know about it because we need to know about these research uh, these resources but if you don't know where else to go, call Amphibians Plus, reach out to Harry uh, and Harry's team. Uh, you can find them at amphibiansplus.com. You can also call them at 863-534-8025. This is not a plug for Harry's business. This is going to save you money and get you pointed in the right direction with seaplane maintenance, and especially if you're talking about doing saltwater flying. I know no one better in the world to address saltwater corrosion issues than Harry and his team. So we'll put this information in our show notes as well. But again, I encourage you to look up amphibiansplus.com. Give them a call at 863-534-8025. Shelby might be yelling at me for giving this number out. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions on seaplane maintenance issues or corrosion issues, um, I encourage you to do that. Harry, really, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to take a lot of this information back to my students. So we look forward to having you in future episodes. Well, thanks so much. It, it's uh, so many of our seaplanes are, uh, as Steve said, they're unobtainable. We have to keep them. We've got to maintain them. They're truly, truly our future. We are so glad you joined us today. If you like today's show, I highly encourage you to join the Seaplane Pilots Association and become a member of the largest seaplane community in the world. Members receive Water Flying, the only full color glossy magazine dedicated to the seaplane community. And it's available in both printed and digital form. 
Your membership also includes access to the Water Landing Directory app, which has the Seaplane Flight School Directory and a calendar of seaplane events, not only here in the United States, but around the world. The association hosts regular educational workshops, safety seminars, and gatherings for seaplane pilots and anyone with a passion for seaplanes. So look us up online at seaplanes.org, join our community, and support our mission of protecting and promoting water flying.